from a lot of our viewers you want more information on it is egg freezing it's getting more popular as we have babies later but what does it really involve we're diving in as one city line producer shares her story giving us the real deal on choosing to freeze her eggs i'm 37 years old and my biological clock is ticking and i knew that i wanted to be a mom and i i haven't met anyone yet and um, when this opportunity came my way, I was like, I have to do this because I want the option. I want to know that, you know, I could meet a person in two years, but I still have eggs that are 37 years old. It was a, a daunting sort of thing to take up, uh, but Dr. Marjorie was really amazing and she was very supportive. This is antral follicular fluid, so the eggs are actually suspended within each of these follicles. Here we would have one, two, three, four. There's some immature ones. And then the larger ones are what are going to inform when I decide to get the eggs out. In terms of treatment for Esther, I had to plan a more aggressive cycle. I wrote the protocol in a way to optimize and maximize the number of eggs we could get out in one cycle. And that would entail that she come to the clinic about four or five visits for blood tests and ultrasounds to see how she was responding to the medication protocol that I wrote. And every time she came in, I then reviewed and the team reviewed her results to decide if we increase the dose of medication, decrease the dose of medication, or leave it the same. This is your medication plan for this cycle. Okay. Um, so starting today, you're gonna take all of your medications in the evening at the same time every night. Okay. The scariest thing for me was doing the injections to start off because I was really worried about how I would do that on my own. Take a new needle tip each day. I spoke to Kathleen and she kind of helped me understand what I was going to do for the next 14 days. And then you'll be back into the clinic on Monday. Okay. We'll pretend this is my skin straight in. And she took me through how to inject myself, what was the medication, when do I take it. It does become... You get used to it. Yeah, you get comfortable with it. Look at the size of this freaking needle, oh my god. It was weird at, at first, injecting myself, and everybody around me was like, how are you doing this? But it was not that bad. Like, you start off, you get used to it, and then you are at it, and it doesn't hurt as much. Let's find the third spot. The harder part was to, the, the mental part of it. You know, the physical part was doable, you'll get there. But the mental part of it, just doing this on my own, you're pumped with estrogen, so your your hormones are flying and your your everything is heightened. So I would be bawling all the time. This is me in tears because that is what happens. Everything is heightened and I'm sitting thinking about life and weeping. It's really uncontrollable. That's what it is. Okay, so this is today, and her lead follicles are ready. I think she's ready, so why don't we give her another dose, give her her trigger shot tonight for Tuesday retrieval. All right, okay. sounds good, okay. thank okay. you. Thanks. So I'm sitting here, getting ready for the surgery, for the retrieval, and I have a lot of cramping. Um, I'm hoping that it will get better after. So I was excited to get 13 eggs out of Esther. Um, ten of them were freezable because they were the mature type that are freezable, and three of them were immature, so we can't freeze those ones. And that happens when we do an egg freezing cycle. We can only freeze those that will be viable when we thaw them to make a baby later. What I've learned about myself is that uh, I'm extremely resilient and very strong and pretty awesome. Uh, I mean, I knew I was resilient because I came to this country at 33 and I went through a pandemic on my own and I moved with no family. But I think that this has just taken it one notch higher and I feel like I can do anything that I put my mind and body to. And so I'm really happy that I was able to do this with an Awa Fertility. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Please welcome Esther Caso and Dr. Marjorie Dixon. Thank you. Oh, I found myself getting emotional because we work together and we know this story. Uh, as you said, lots of hormones involved. It's been a lot of up and down. We're always checking in with you here on the show. How are you feeling today? After the video, a little emotional, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel really happy and I feel healthy. 
I feel empowered, yeah. uh, and I'm really grateful. So very blessed. That's how I feel. What a great, great perspective. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Esther's sto uh, story, Dr. Dixon. How mm -hmm. common is this, is her story? It's becoming more and more common mm -hmm. because previously we couldn't work with eggs because we didn't have the technology to thaw them and make babies after very well. Okay. Now that the technology has changed and with the advent of people getting more and more information about it, it's very common. I talk to patients about freezing their eggs every day now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about risk factors when mm -hmm. it comes to freezing eggs. What are the biggest risk factors? What are the side effects? Um, I'll talk to you about them and then I'll get you to check in Esther to see how many how the, you're being affected by it all Yeah, so what are the risk factors? So when I talk to patients about freezing their eggs, there are like sort of four main ones There's yeah. the potential for infection. Okay bleeding. Yeah pain mm -hmm. And then something called OHSS, which is an acronym for ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome It's fairly infrequent that last one But when mm -hmm. people respond really briskly to the medications they can have too much stimulation Okay. But we mitigate for all of those things with medications, and then we manage as people are cycled through. We adjust the medications up or down. Mm -hmm. You know, we know you're a doctor. You've been doing this show forever. <laughs> but seeing you in that tape, I'm like, and a scientist. Yeah. It's like, oh, my gosh. There's something like I'm impressed with both of you. Um, so let's talk about your experience, Esther, after the retrieval. Mm -hmm. um, what was that whole process like for the retrieval? How did it feel? So on the day off, um, there was a lot of cramping, mm -hmm. and they gave me something to start off, like I knew just before the, the actual retrieval happened. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I was, there was spotting on the day off, there was cramping on the day off, and then I think after two days, I was, it was better. Okay. And I was on antibiotics, and I kind of took it easy, I rested it out uh, for the next two weeks, just paid attention to my body, and um, yeah, it, it, was, it wasn't... It wasn't too difficult and it yeah. wasn't too uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You talk about feeling like you were sort of like full and heavy yes. uh, in this area. What's happening in there? So what happens is that because you've got all of these follicles in there, just, you know, you're on medication, it's, it's growing and they're all there. All the eggs. All the eggs are there. They're not yeah. allowed to sort of ovulate. You're, right. It gets really <laughs> bloated and heavy. Yeah. So it's a weird feeling. Like, I'd never experienced that before until I actually did this. Right. But it was, it's funny and it's weird, you know, and you're like, okay, something's happening. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> yes. And I'm just going to let it be because, you know, in a few days it'll be fine. I'm mm -hmm. carrying around some precious cargo. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And lots of it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Eggs, yes. Precious eggs. eggs. Yeah. Did you recover quickly? After the retrieval? Yeah, I think so. Like, after two days, I was absolutely fine. Came back to work. Everything was okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, okay. Ten eggs. Yeah. That's what you ended up with in the end. Ten eggs. So, would you call this process a success for Esther? Is this what you're looking yes. for? Yes, absolutely. So, I have to gauge what I'm expecting from a patient based on the blood tests that we do to anticipate their cycle. Yeah. And in full disclosure, I was a little worried about Esther because some of her parameters were lower than ideal. Yeah. But she is 37, past yeah. 35, we're considered advanced maternal age. Mm -hmm. So I was a little worried that we might get even fewer eggs. Mm -hmm. And she like pulled it out in the last minute. She came out strong. <laughs> and uh, so she got 13 eggs, yeah. three of them were immature, 10 of them were of the mature variety. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that we freeze because we know that once we thaw them, they can be viable for future fertilization. And now what's the chance for pregnancies if you have 10 eggs? Okay, so you kind of stratify it by age. Okay. At age 37, if we have 10 eggs that we thaw, mm -hmm. the likelihood of a take-home baby is about 50%. Okay. okay. That also depends on the lab. So you have to know the ability of the lab where you are. Okay. The younger you are, under 35, if you thaw 10 eggs, your likelihood of a take-home baby in our hands at ANOVA is 60%. Okay. So the younger, the better. And then if you get older, past that, 38, 10 eggs only gives you a 40% of take-home baby. So the sooner you come, the better. Got it. All right. Talk to us a little bit about um, financing this whole process. because. It, uh, I think a lot of people are interested in finding out how long it takes and how much it might cost. 
So how long it takes, we take about the first two weeks of your cycle. We're capitalizing. Instead of ovulating once, mm -hmm. we give you medications to make you ovulate as many eggs as possible, but you don't ovulate them yourself. We ovulate for you. Oh, okay. The cost of a cycle now, yeah. it ranges somewhere between ten and $13,000. Right. But patients come to it in a variety of ways with a variety of financial tools. So sometimes people have benefits. Mm -hmm. for The big costs are the process, the procedure, the technology, and then also the medications. So sometimes the process is covered, sometimes the medications, sometimes both, sometimes none. Yeah. We also have financing. Sometimes people pay in installments over years. So mm. it really is a variety. We have a patient care service that helps people navigate that because that can be somewhat daunting. Mm -hmm. But we like to help walk people through the journey so we have that service available as well. And that's a case-by-case -case basis. Absolutely. Okay. Esther, you know, I, I loved hearing you say in that tape that you are strong and resilient and you're awesome. A lot of people don't know, like behind the scenes here on the show, we are all in each other's business. And we know that Esther came here with no family and has built a whole community and is now building your own family here in Canada. So what advice do you have for people who are thinking this might be something I want to try? I think I wish I knew about it sooner. So I think education is the biggest thing. Yeah. We don't realize you hit 30 and you start your fertility starts to de deteriorate, yeah. 35 even more. Mm -hmm. So I would say get that test done, test your fertility, see where you're at, and then start saving up for it if you think that that's what you want to do. And you know, you, it could be your career, you might want to have kids later, mm -hmm. uh, you, you might not have a partner, whatever the reason is, get that test and yeah. then try and save up for it. Knowledge and then is do power. it. Yeah, knowledge, knowledge is, is power. power. If knowledge I have one there, I as a, I've had the same conversations with people over years. Yes. And Having the information is what the game changer is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that people are not at the mercy of their biology. Be proactive. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Marjorie.